I just landed at the airport Venice Treviso. Uh, Treviso essentially is next to Venice, not too far away, but I'm not going to Venice this time. I'm going to Treviso. And this is the city bus going between the airport and uh, Treviso. And uh, this airport here is mainly used for Venice, or actually almost only used for Venice uh, surroundings. However, uh, there's several buses to Venice only and they were absolutely packed. It was crowded, people buying tickets. And uh, Venice is a place you must see. But as soon as you go off the beaten path, even though Treviso is right next to this airport, you can technically see that you're the only one. Because several, several flights just arrived but it seems that nobody is going to Treviso. Uh, ticket costs about 350 or 350 uh, in the euros and brings you to the central station of Treviso, the train station. And uh, that's actually where I'll be staying. It's a beautiful little town. It's where the tiramisu is from, the world famous dessert. It's from the restaurant La Biqueria, I believe, or that's at least where it originates. But the whole city obviously serves uh, tiramisu. Uh, they have a lot of local specialties. Uh, kitchen is quite different from the Venetian one. And uh, it's just interesting to see that as soon as you go off the path that's most often walked or in 99% of cases, you're alone. And uh, so that Treviso has nothing to offer, but uh, Maybe it's the season, September. Uh, you just find yourself alone, except for these two uh, passengers. So, a uh, benefit of that is that you do not have to stand in line, don't have to deal with immense crowds. Uh, you feel a bit more like an explorer. And it's just a bit more authentic, I believe, because I've been to Venice last year. I've never seen such a crowded place in terms of tourism. So that's why I chose another place this time. So in terms of traveling alone and off the beaten path, uh, you would say that Italy is absolutely killed by tourism. And um, it's just essentially completely overcrowded. But that's not the case. I mean. You don't want to be in certain areas in the summer because it's absolutely just overrun by tourists and uh, you can't walk without some suitcase in front of you, which is, I guess it's nice, it has some atmosphere, but uh, not that I hate other tourists because I'm one myself, but I just prefer to have a bit more of a quiet and uh, authentic place. So the thing is that Italy is not overrun at all because as soon as you get off this beaten path, you're all alone. And as soon as you're off season, you're all alone. Um, so it has a lot of bargains and deals, Italy. Uh, you would probably also think that it's expensive, but it's not. Uh, it's only when indeed you go to Venice, uh, sit down at a restaurant you don't know, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg, but as soon as you get in the back streets or just in another city or even in the big cities, you find coffees for euro and a half, two euros, or maybe three if you sit down, beers for just a few bucks. Uh, you find good quality food for, I would say, just a bit more than Bulgaria. The prices can be double at times. But it's, it, it doesn't kill your budget at all. You can find very good hotels for 20, 30 euros. I think you had this in Rome in February. It just depends on the season, on the place. But Italy is a country that has everything for every budget. So don't be scared by what you've heard that Italy is completely overrun. It is in the big cities and in the season and in Venice probably always. Or not even always, but uh, you know, uh, choose wisely. Get off the path that's most often chosen, and you'll have a blast in it. People are fantastic. 
it is a beautiful country. Uh, it has good food if you know where to go. The coffee is obviously insane, it's fantastic. I have about seven a day when I'm here. Uh, public transport is very good. The trains cost you no more than a cappuccino and you're in another city which has a nice piazza, a beautiful church, a Duomo. Um, Italy is a place that's world famous and although it might sound cliche, there's always a reason why things are famous. It's just because it's great. Uh, I never really liked to walk from places, but uh, I found out, having been in Italy at least 10 times, that it's not as you would think. It's an incredibly huge country as well. I don't know if it's bigger than the UK for, or, or than, than England, for example. Uh, it's not bigger than Germany, but it's certainly bigger than Bulgaria, I believe. It must be. Uh, it is a country of contrast. It has everything from the islands to the beaches to the jet set places and are incredibly expensive. But also to the small villages that I haven't really explored in the sleepy areas of Italy where you can knock on doors and they will say, hey, a tourist, really? That's also a uh, So what you'll also see, enough about Italy, is that you go to countries that are off the beaten path, such as Bulgaria, which is still relatively undiscovered by the masses, although it's starting to happen. If you travel off the beaten path in a country that's off the beaten path, it will be, you know, completely enough. Let's say when I went to Ukraine, uh, which is already, you know, a dark spot on the map of imagination. Nobody really has dreams about Ukraine or about, about traveling there someday. It's more like, oh, I found a cheap place to Kiev. I heard they have cheap beer and nice girls. Uh, although there's nothing wrong with that. People, tra people travel to these places just because it suddenly gets on, uh, on, on their path. Uh, I'm very interested in the country. It's fascinating. And, um, once you go, for example, outside of Kiev or to northern Ukraine, north of Kiev, you'll find nobody. The most beautiful monasteries, the churches, the hotels, just nearly empty and people are just twisting their thumbs waiting for you. Um, is that nice? Yes, because the people are actually interested in you and what you're doing there, for goodness sake, is what I'm here. What brings you here out of all places? And I say, well, I just want to see the place as it is, uh, have conversations, see how people live, and see the unknown side of it, you know, or of it. Yeah. And I've never been disappointed, so you must see the highlights because there's a reason people go there. Uh, maybe the second or third time you go, try to go up to be the path and see a bit more of what the actual country is like. Basically, Bulgaria, as soon as you're away from the coast, Sofia or Plovdiv, you're already off the beaten path and uh, you are essentially an explorer. Especially if you don't know the language, you'll feel like some real old fashioned adventurer. That's what you essentially are. So, these were some reflections. I'll keep you posted on my adventure in Italy. Bye bye. Sempre con la stessa chiavetta, poggi qua, sì. si apre, vai vai. Va vai. bene, grazie. Vieni di qua, ti faccio vedere la sala della colazione. Mm. Allora, ah, va bene. questa è la sala della colazione, mm -hmm. se vuoi prendiamo anche l'ascensore. La camera da 101. Sì. Che bella! <laughs> Perfetto! Ok? Sì. 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 Sì.
Sì, perfetto. Vedete qui il bagno. Sì. Ok? Grazie molto. Prego, ti lascio più le chiavi. Sì. Ciao, ciao. Grazie. Prego, ciao. ciao. Ready day? But we're here in Italy.